Hello and welcome to another episode of the Business Spotlight series. My name is Claudia Thompson and today I'm here with Paul Skates who is the CEO of the Mental Wealth Coach Limited. I'm very excited to hear what he's got to say and why don't you take us all away Paul and tell us um, how the Mental Wealth Coach came to be. Absolutely. Firstly, thank you for inviting me on to, to your podcast. It's um, it's a bit of a journey. So the mental wealth coach, people say, what does mental wealth coach mean? And I say, it's about whether we all have mental health. Are we mentally wealthy right now? So that's transient. That doesn't mean I'm really mentally wealthy all the time. And the journey of that starting comes from a whole rapture of different industries of background. And I started to realize in business, especially that we we don't always look after ourselves as CEOs. We don't look always, we try to look after our staff, but it, you know, actually there's a part of that. If staff don't feel that we're approachable, if we're certainly um, in a moment of franticness or dealing with, with a client that might be frantic, I always check in every morning and I say to staff before we do anything else, and this is just my way of doing it. We have music for five minutes and then we lit upbeat music. And I say, my door is open. And even if I can't deal with whatever needs dealing with then, that then I will I will make time every single day because it's important that my staff feel supported or validated because they are my business. They are my friends. They become family. And it's an extension of family, really. Um, so mental wealth coach is about teaching people, individuals, corporates. Um, yeah, and I said I, I said before the interview, unfortunately, yes, governmental bodies. Um, so going and teaching them about, OK, you're telling me that your, your productivity is really good. Tell me about the people. How much do you know about your members staff? Do you know what their what their favorite films are? You know, having that personal interest in them. And actually, I've always believed that, that, yes, pay rises are great, but actually making sure that you say, give them a thank you card if they've done a good job. Um, and I realised, that you know, that's just the way that I do it. But I think that's what I've learned over the years. I've worked for different businesses where I felt undervalued. And then that made me, I do my job and I do it to the best of my ability. But was I really invested? And I'd have then that uncomfortableness of, I don't know that we fit. And usually I would end up sort of leaving not on bad terms but I'd think actually I don't think I'm right for your business because I want to make sure that your business is is what it is but I, I need to be able to sit with the comfortableness that my morals and values fit theirs and same for people that work for me I you know usually if they if there's a discord and they are on a different journey I, I don't see it as a negative I, I kind of see it as that actually staff, I always say, you know, I want to help you graduate, celebrate if you, you know, I like, I like retention, but actually if you get offered an opportunity, I wouldn't want to stand in the way and some go off and then they come back. And I think it's, for me, business is, is made sometimes more convoluted than it needs to be in terms of, no matter what industry that is, in terms of if your staff, are valued and they and and they feel part of a family and it, and i suppose we could look at the john lewis for that making them partners it was a, set, it, a very clever way of kind of but made them feel that they were part of something part of a, of a business part of a family then actually my business will will look after itself and in the mental wealth coach side of things because people are buying me um, and then I have other practitioners that come along board, like yoga specialists, um, mindfulness, Pilates, um, to nutritionists and stuff. But they always want me. And I, I kind of say to them, trust me, we always do an introduction if we're doing a retreat. You know, it's about you're coming into the mental health coach as a collective. And yes, you might have been me that you've bought. But actually, I need you to buy my business and i don't just always mean financially i need you to eat breathe and sleep that feeling of the business when it's relevant to you so um you you mentioned quite a few things about your team there what would you say have been your biggest learnings as an employer since starting a business my biggest learnings have been to always listen actively listen to everybody from whether that be investors to my business advisors and I, I always have this photo of my family because my my 
my mother and father are always in the background and they, they will check in with me and go, Paul, that sounds great. They'll give me the, what the possible potential risks are. Have you measured this through? I would say also around, I, I do, I take I take risks, you, you have to, but they're me measured calculated risks. And sometimes even on paper, 99%, everybody's going, it's going to work. And for whatever reason, it doesn't. And it's about, yes, you feel wounded. Yes, you get upset. Yes, you're passionate about what you're doing. That's normal. It's about allowing yourself to feel those emotions. But that's when I up my well-being, what I call toolkit. So that's everything I would do that keeps me physically and mentally, psychologically well. Because it's what I've learned through the years. I've seen businesses and business owners burn out when they don't give themselves time for family. They don't give themselves time for a five minute break because when you've got 5,000 emails and you're like, it's like, I haven't got time. I haven't got time to drink. I haven't got time to eat. But actually, if you don't, then actually, eventually, it, 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 something's going to break. And, and that is about, I suppose it's learning. And I've seen how also I learned when I've worked for certain people in the past, how I wouldn't want to treat other people. So you learn through 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 experience and you learn through adversity. And I think even adversity teaches me something, even if I don't realize it at the time, there's something that comes out of learning. Um, and that's the same with any business owners that um, you will interview. There will be people that come into your world in business and um, they surprise you in terms of it's not quite as straightforward as it seems. I have had it where people have taken money um, I had an accountant without knowing it, but I don't then go, everybody's the same. I go, right, that just need, means that I need to connect with my trusted members. And also I need to not always just constantly take people at face value because that's how I am. So I suppose how in answer, summarizing again, I'm a waffler. I do apologize. Um, what have I learned? I've learned to stick to my values. So my values are to treat people with humanity. So regardless of what industry I'm working within, because I work in different ones, but also to treat with respect and to never be afraid to say, I don't know the answer to that. And I think that's something that I've really valued. And, and I've been fortunate enough that people have seen that as a quality rather than a weakness. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned um, two words there. Well, you mentioned family and burnout. So these are just two topics, really. How or what's your top tip for balancing your personal life and the demands of running a business? Yeah. So, so if I give you a daily routine, so I get up and I'll get up at, at an extra half an hour early. I will get up. I will do some gentle stretching. Um, and on other days, I'll do a quick jog around the corner. Um, I do my gratitude list. So I write 10 things that I'm grateful in the morning. Then I sort of have my normal sort of breakfast, sort of like you anybody would. I have a cold shower every morning. Uh, it's not for everybody. So I would say with precaution, if you have a, anything coronary or osteoporosis, not going to be good for you. But it, it's, it's about I set myself up for the day. That doesn't mean things don't go wrong. It doesn't mean that I don't have days where I go, I don't. You know, I can do this anymore. But the more I resilience myself with those positive things. So if if I if I wake up and you know, like we do, and I'm and I've it's been a stressful week so far, and I'm thinking, oh, what's going to come today? Then I up the pleasurable activities before I start my day. So I don't turn my I don't look at emails until at least 7 38 a.m. in the morning, regardless. My phone is always on silent which my family go get driven mad by. But I say, actually, it's my way of protecting myself because I will come back to people. But if it's ping, 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 then actually, if I'm trying to concentrate, I'm going to be tempted to look and then I will get distracted. Um, if it's emergency calls coming through in terms of even in business situations, if I'm working and there's a live event going on, it, that you can set your phone up to that. It's like WhatsApp. You, I, I make sure that during the day, People, because I've learned, unless it's, you know, even with friends, if they say I was online 10 minutes ago, I'd be like, right, I need to set the setting. So they think I was on, last time I was on was last night, because they get into the dialogue, why aren't you answering me? And I'm like, because I'm in the middle of my day. But it, I wouldn't want them to feel, and I value them. So it's, it's kind of like, I have to set boundaries in place. But the fundamentals is, 
I watch what I eat. So if I'm feeling sluggish, of course, we all have the temptation about I'm going to go and get some sugar, something to wake me up. And I'll go, hang on, if you're feeling sluggish, Paul, is this because you're stressed? Is this lack of sleep? Or is this just because you need to take two minutes outside in the garden? Even if it's raining, that I, you know, it's just water. I can put an umbrella or a hood over myself. But it is about allowing yourself permission, guilt-free, to give yourself, it could be 30 seconds. And then I'll give you very quick snapshot things to do. So if we get overwhelmed, um, say we're starting to feel what we would describe as, and some people might not recognize that it's anxiety, but we're getting stressed. If you can get an ice cold drink or an ice cold, go run a flannel under a really cold tap and put it on the back of the base of the neck, or on the crease of your elbows on the inside, or here and there on the temples, it reduces straight away, which is what's called cortisol levels, which is going to keep the anxiety and the stress going. That's kind of key. One key, I do it with kids and things like that. The other thing is we always forget to breathe. So, so diaphragmatic breathing, it takes seconds, but it's easy. And I've been guilty to go, I haven't got time to breathe, which sounds ridiculous because you're not saying that. It's like, I've got too much to do. But actually, I don't know about anybody else and people that will watch this, it, you know, I, I actually get less done the more I rush. So it's about taking a step back. And also, rec I, I question myself regularly <laughs> on a daily basis, hourly basis. And I go, what's really going on, Paul? You know, you know when you kind of react, I must get that done. Okay. Yeah, there's a time boundary on it. Okay. What's really going on right now that you're getting yourself to the point that you're feeling whoa, I don't know what to do. And I snap at somebody. Then I go, right, stop what you're doing at all. Go and make that repair. So a, an example of that is if somebody comes to a member of staff or even a family member, because um, my father is it's kind of like one of my non-exec directors. If he comes into a room and I'm busy doing something and starts talking to me, I will pause and I'll say, Dad, do, does it need my undivided attention? If so, I will, I, will, I will turn the screen off not the computer and I will then focus on what he's telling me or he will say no actually it can wait so I go okay great I make sure that I come back to you once I've dealt with this so it's about taking those measured approaches that we should do when we're not working which is upping the things that we know that make us feel good even when we're struggling and I mean this in a general sense of our mental wealth isn't at its best I always make sure cleaning uh, yeah I, there's always dusting but if I, unless I enjoy it on a bad day, that if I might be having a bad day, that can wait. You know, it's about going outside for a bit of a walk or for other people, it might be kicking a ball around with their child. Something around that, making time. And I do a gratitude list at night. And it's about training my brain to go. And the gratitude list can be very small things that I wake up grateful that, I, that I'm awake. I wake up grateful I can have a cup of tea. And it's those things that I find really important and I think the minute I start to notice that I'm becoming overwhelmed with business or, you know, personal things are getting in the way, I go, right, where on your gratitude list, what have you done today? And then I'll, I'll start to notice the pattern. Oh, I didn't take five minutes. Mm -hmm. it, and and that, that's, I know it can't always be that way, but we can all take 30 seconds and just go breathe from the diaphragm. Get mm. the cold flannel, get an ice cold drink. It needs to be ice cold because that's what will hit the parasympathetic nervous system. But it's that. It's about valuing that your time is just as important as the profit margins that, that, that lots of business owners get caught up in. Yeah, they're important to keep going and to keep people employed. But if you're not wealthy in mind and your staff aren't, then actually that will dwindle very quickly. Yeah. Then thank you for some really hands-on tips that you can uh, then the people watching can take away straight away and and, and implement. Um, if you had to start again from square one in business, what would you do differently? Um, I would learn to. So I've, I I I would I'll tell you exactly what I do. I would be slower rather than jumping straight in. Um, I would also make sure I had the good team of people that I've got around me now. So I never thought of thinking of my family. They were working then. So it's about finding the right people. So sometimes it might not be people that work for me. It might not be people in my industry, but real friends and have them sit in the non-exec board directors. Um, I'd make sure I have people like myself, minded, 
you know, that are kind of we take risks and then they'd have the others that would go great but what about if it goes wrong um and the other thing i would say is that to and this is without kind of looking at you know because i always say every bad experience teaches you something new but as many i'm sure will recognize in business we might get stitched up so it's about going take people at face value but don't take it until the contract signed that actually that's a given because they may mean it but actually that I would always be in my head investing that money they said they're going to put in before the money's there. And that's the mistakes I used to make. And then I'd be like, oh, my God, I've committed to this, this, this and this. So it would be to take a much more and maybe that's a maturity thing. But no, even now I go, they seem lovely. They seem genuine, um, especially if I don't know them. But always remember that it's business and you. it doesn't mean that, that they don't have that intention, but it's business. And, and it's money mm-hmm. um and actually you can transfer that into to you know family loaning money to people it's it's always very difficult but i think yeah starting out again take my time take the breaths that i've mentioned before and to surround myself with the right people but also to have conversations with people that don't know anything about my industries and go what do you think to this and that and 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 take on board what they say even if i think Mm, yeah but you don't know the industry i would still write down and take note and go right they've got some validity there or even if i don't think they have that might come back later and i'll go i wish i'd taken note of that more yeah. and, and i make notes i record all the time the other thing i would say to people is um when i have conversations with clients on the phone i make it very clear i will be recording this so that i can make sure that i hear everything um, same in a meeting and I send them a transcription of that dictaphone recording so that actually we are clear from day one um, contracts is another thing I would take piece, I would make sure that my contract is written but I didn't always think about intellectual property so I would say yeah of course you can use whatever you like in terms of on before so even social media but I would forget sometimes that actually I'm agreeing that especially in my entertainment entity background actually has my artists agreed to that so it's those kind of things that that i've learned and you have to learn the hardware i believe i don't think if you sell through then actually probably you wouldn't have a you wouldn't have those mistakes but actually i don't know that i don't know anybody that has a business or my friends that have businesses that don't go through experiences of adversity because it's the only way we learn and i think it's the same for life yeah, no, absolutely. In hindsight, it's always, it's always easy in hindsight to say, oh, I would have done this differently and so on. But the truth is that every decision brought us exactly to where we are now. Um, Something that a lot of the business owners, especially the newer ones that I speak to, struggle with is financial management. What would or what piece of advice would you have for someone uh, regarding their financial management? So I always think, right, and it, it it's the same as it was for me when I started out. So what 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 have I got in my bank? Because if I'm going to ask somebody to invest, I need to know that I have something there to invest myself. Because if I believe in it, but I've got no money, then how can I expect somebody to believe in it and give me an investment? I think start small. So I would do all my own printing. You know, I I would just literally yes, I can hire companies now and stuff like that. But actually don't go gun home and 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 spend a lot if you've if you're fortunate to have money um and it's there don't waste it find out the tricks and the, and the, the tricks and the sort of skills um in the industry where you can spend wisely i think also you know there's nothing wrong and my parents will laugh because they say you don't ever do anything small paul but i would say you know start small it, because the urge is, especially if you're given a platform. So my background when I worked in the music industry was I was given very big platforms very quickly. And what I do is I, I could call a lot of um, favours on people and I could get this, this, this and this. But actually slow it down and start small because it's better to have one thing be really successful than have something really big and things go wrong because that's what people will remember. So the financials are always, especially in the financial climate now, I think it's about what is your aim and objectives this month? What's your aim and objectives in five years? You know, I, I know we all do two years, three years, five year plans, but I go, what's your objective right now? What's the next week? 
what would you like to achieve and financials i think also financial is seen as the biggest barrier but i also think that actually it's our mindset around it so yes we need money to be able to have materials i mean i've never i never employed staff i couldn't afford to employ staff so it'd be me so i'd be going out i'd be doing what i need to do and and eventually you know sometimes it worked and and sometimes it didn't but i would always make sure that you've got enough to feed yourself pay your bills to live but actually also try to as much as uh, and i laugh at myself because i can hear my younger self going but i want to do this but actually I need to, uh, I would say to anybody starting out, get get the right contact. So when I was at uni I and started to leave uni, I was already, from my work experience, talking to p- business owners and saying, what, what do you find that's a struggle? I used to offer my time for free because it was just my time and build up that way so that you could do what I call the old days of, if I do this for you, Will you do, would you give me your service back in return and build what I call true corporate partner relationships, which isn't let me take something really quickly from you. It's like a three year strategy in my head. And I always say to people, to, when I used to get investments. I'd say, what do you want out of it? How quickly do you want a return? Are you investing because you want a quick return? Are you investing because you believe in it? And, and, and then it's kind of so that I know I can do what I need to do or if there's no investments available and the bank don't want to give me anything, then I have to have maybe three jobs whilst trying to start my business. Mm-hmm. And that's the reality I think most business owners will know and recognize themselves is that we don't just start a business and, and everything goes through me. I've done cleaning jobs whilst bar jobs just to get it off the ground so I could earn a bit of money to then go, right, I've got £100 for argument's sake. Right, mm-hmm. how can I make the £100 work to, to make it get to the next stage. Um, first business was working in St. Totally different to what I do now. Um, and and it was around, okay, so I'm selling a product. Now I've got a product, but actually I've only got one. So, okay, what's the best way to go about that? So I thought, think of the five senses. So it's like everybody does this. So they'll give they'll give pens away. Okay, get that, because I might use that pen. What about their sight, smell, taste, and 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 the, and everything else that goes with it, and touch? So for me now, I mean, we're very lucky that we have set without mentioning business names. I send people things like this. So I will send them just something, and it's very simple. Hopefully, it will show. Hang on. So on here it says, "No words, just hugs," and it's a candle. So it's something that, and and I send that without, uh, we might not have done business. I just send things like that or quotes. I will do daily quotes that cost me nothing. I'll send them a message saying something as simple as, so I can can make these myself or I can type it to them. Yes, I'll do it on social media, but actually when it's somebody that I want to, it's a customer, I want to make it personal. I don't just want to make it a social media tweet or something like that because that's something I'm showing because I want to show it with lots of people because it helps them. But also bear in mind, or I say, I I, I will, my, my way of working is that also I like to uh, be in a position where I can charge corporates, but I can also give, and I always very careful how I word this, um, gifted spaces for people that can't afford because, and it's not about, them then feeling that they um should be grateful it's no actually would you like to do would you like me to offer you this as my gift to you just because that's me giving back Mm. because you get just as much giving back yeah yeah absolutely and that's a really really good point to you know try and find ways to show your customers that you care and also things to make you stand out a little bit. So um, that brings us to our last question. What do you think are some common misconceptions that people have about running a business? I think, so one thing people think is that, you know, it's great, you can have all the time off when you want to, but when when you're running a business, if I'm off, I don't get paid. So that's one first misconception. Secondly, oh, um, I can work from home and I'll just do my own schedule. 
great but actually you need to be very very stringent and actually i treat so i work from home i work from hotels and rooms but i treat my day as a working day every day so that's the same as discipline of doing my daily gratitude list the misconceptions are also every business owner has got loads of money um no not necessarily because actually they're investing in their business um hard work it's 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 extra hard work i would say because i don't have a guarantee that I've got a salary every month unless I'm working. So I would say also do something you're passionate and you love because if you're, I don't know, I'm trying to think of something without it coming across as duality to somebody who does this as a business, but say I was doing something I'm not interested in, but I know that it's going to make me earn a living, then actually it probably won't last very long because my passion will go. But the misconceptions are that it's, You've got all the time, you've got much more freedom. You can earn as much as you want to charge. Yeah, maybe when you've built your business up. But actually, does that sit with your morals? Secondly, no, you can't just sort of rely on other people to, to make it for you. And also, you know, there is big things about this. Well, at least with a business, I can go on holiday when I want to. Yeah, but you won't be paid for going on holiday because if you're not at work, you're not earning. Yeah, some very um, true points there that I've definitely heard before as well um, from friends and family. Um, so thank you so much. Um, how can people find out more about you, what you do? How can they get in touch? Yeah, and I just one last thing I'd say is always remember to be humble. So, you know, when, when you know, I've been fortunate enough to win awards, you know, I do a lot of work with, the, with well, the, I did with the two boys in the Royals um, and stuff around mental health. And I've never, ever not been humbled by, you know what, I was lucky or or an opportunity arise. Um, so therefore, it, the, it, it's about remembering that. I've got, a, this is something else that, that somebody bought for me, and it was remembering to ring a friend. Not just because, they're, you know, it's a friend, or to ring my customers. So I have had customers that I'm speaking to for three, four years, and I ring them up and I say, how's the family? How are you doing? And I want nothing more from them apart from catching up. So lastly, in terms of your question, which I've now forgotten because I've gone on on a tangent, just so I've got it, I would say the easiest way to get hold of me is on Twitter or LinkedIn. So Twitter, it's so easy. It's just my surname. It's just my full name. So it's at Paul Skates, and that's S-C-A-T-E-S. And the same for LinkedIn. It's just my name. I'm not on Facebook, not for any reason. It's just, it enabled me to not get distracted social media time. So with um, Twitter and LinkedIn, any business owner will know this. I don't need to do TikTok talk unless i'm doing weddings where it's helpful to do short videos um i measure my time on on social media, um because actually i will do it first thing in the morning at 6 a.m in the morning or last thing at night because otherwise it becomes a full-time job so yeah best way to get me and also on my linkedin i think it has my phone number my email is very i always just say go with not my business one because it's too long for people to type sometimes it's just get my surname and then my initials ps at gmail.com um and i'm always happy with my mobile number it's it, it, i know people go really i say yes because i don't carry business cards i never have done something else because i always want them to remember me rather than a card in a bag so my if you're happy for me to i'll just say it now so my mobile number and it's always available even though it's on silent is zero seven nine seven four one nine zero seven two five and i'm always happy to talk to people even if they want advice for free because it's about giving back so i hope because i do realize i go on different tangents my background's just so people can understand if they think oh this guy might be able to help me is fitness and nutrition music industry tv worlds then obviously mental health and working in that and uh, and just um, working in creative sectors. Mm -hmm. So there's this plethora of stuff there, but that's not about me going, look at me. That's about going, if you think I can help you, give me a call. If I can't, I definitely can pass you on to somebody else that can. Fantastic. And thank you for that additional um, test, uh, tip about uh, managing your time on social media, because I'm pretty sure a lot of people struggle with that. So thank you so much for your time. Today, no, thank Paul. you. It's been an absolute pleasure.
And thank you. And, and it's amazing what you're doing because we need things like this down here and all over, actually. It's fantastic. Thank, thank you for the opportunity. And apologies, everybody. I, I, I could talk for England. I said to Claudia before we came on, I went, Claudia, you need to do this because otherwise if people nod, I think, oh, they want more. They want more. But it, it's passion. And I, I love what I do. So hopefully it's been helpful and there's been some tips there. And I always say, I, I found this. When it rains, look for rainbows because it's just, it's not a grey day. It's not a miserable day. It's a grey day and it's wet. And it's about that mindset. That does take training, but it doesn't need necessarily a psychologist. You can learn this stuff by doing what I call bite-sized chunks. Okay, fantastic. Thank you so much, Paul. Thank you. Take care.